Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. This is my previous Hue Sync lighting setup and this is what it looks like now. In this video, I'll show you how I set up the light strip behind my TV, replacing my old player light bar setup. I'll be comparing my old light bar setup with the new setup featuring the ambience light strip to give you an idea of what both look like, with the hope being that you have enough information to determine which option is better. I'm going to start with the current player light bar setup and talk about some of the things I didn't like. For all of these demos I have the sync mode set to video and the intensity set to moderate for a more gradual transition. With the player light bars at 100% on the brighter scenes, the dark spots between the light bars are less visible. However, you can still clearly see the semicircle each light forms. As you step down in brightness to 75%, the semicircles become more prominent. At 50%, the light emanating out of the light bars looks very unappealing in all but the very brightest scenes. At 25%, the lights don't look as bad because of the low output of light. The max perceived brightness of the player light bars far exceed that of the player gradient light strip and so it's difficult to get a uniform look, regardless of the brightness level you set in the hue sync up. This is in part due to the orientation of the light bars and how close they are to the wall. It would have been good to see an option that allows you to set the relative brightness of each component, i.e. set the light bars to a lower brightness relative to the gradient light strip. If for example I have the gradient light strip set to 75% brightness, the light bars would be set to a value 10% lower at 65%. This logic would then apply to any brightness percentage the gradient light strip is set to. All of the products featured in this video will be linked in the description if you are interested. I earn a small commission if you use those links, so thank you in advance for supporting the channel. Opening up the box, the first thing you see is this info card. The most important point is the third one which indicates where you can safely cut the strip. A little package containing some documentation. We have some safety instructions and then a quick setup guide. Since I only have the single light strip, I don't need to worry about having a bend where the connector is. Here is the 2 meter light strip bound together with these little cardboard pieces. One end of the light strip has four holes for connecting additional 1 meter extensions. The other end will slot into the control box which I'll show shortly. Taking a closer look at the light strip, it's impossible to make out the individual LEDs. The sticky back of the light strip is segmented allowing you to attach the light strip a bit at a time. These arrows indicate where you can safely cut the light strip. In the remainder of the box we have a European plug attachment. I won't be using this since I'm based in the UK. The rather bulky mains adapter featuring a hole for the cable and a section for the required plug attachment. This is a control box with one end reserved for the power cable. There are two adhesive strips at the back for easy installation. And finally a connection point for the light strip. This is the UK plug attachment. This slots onto the mains adapter like so. Push down on this tab to release the plug attachment. Finally we have the cable. The two ends look similar at first glance but they are in fact different. The end with the larger hole plugs into the mains adapter. The end with the smaller hole plugs into the control box. Pulling the TV forward reveals my current lighting setup. You can see that the gap between each light bar is pretty large, contributing to the noticeable void between the lights when the TV is flush against the wall. I could have probably angled the light bars on the left and right at a 45 degree angle which might have resulted in better coverage or it might have introduced bright spots due to the intersecting light sources. In order to more easily remove the adhesive I made use of a heat gun. You can use a hairdryer as an alternative. I set the temperature to 50 degrees celsius so as to not bend or damage the plastic housing of the light bars. I applied heat evenly to the base of the light bar in 30 second bursts. After each burst I slowly pulled on the light bar and at the same time twisted to loosen the adhesive. In this close up shot you can see that the 3M tape at the top is off with the bottom very much still stuck on. I was at it for a good 15 minutes before I was able to finally remove the light. The key here is to be patient and not use too much force. At the end there was a little bit of residue still left on the TV. It came off very easily using a wet wipe. If you envision yourself removing and replacing your lights regularly then I'd suggest using a couple of command strips instead of the provided 3M tape. Those can be removed more easily using the tabs and will not leave any residue. Now for the fun part. I started off the install by connecting the cable with the larger hole into the mains adapter. The other end I plugged into the control box. Before I continue I thought it would be useful to mention that the cable is a healthy 2.5 meters long which is more than enough for most situations. I have a socket extension right behind my TV so the wire is a bit too long for my requirements. Before attaching the 2 meter light strip to the back of my TV I had to determine if I could use the full length of the light strip. This is because my 77 inch TV is 172 centimeters wide when measured horizontally. If you look at the existing play gradient light strip it doesn't span the full width or height of the TV. 
The other difference is that the Play Gradient Light Strip is angled at 45 degrees for wider coverage behind the TV. The new Ambience Light Strip is not angled and so the spread of the light will not be the same. I plugged in the power cable and inserted the 4-pin connector into the control box to begin the setup process. I made sure the arrow on the connecting cable lined up with the top of the control box. With everything connected, I was expecting the whole light strip to light up and when it didn't, I thought it was part of the setup process and I soldiered on. In the settings menu in the Philips Hue app, click on lights, hit the plus button and then search. It shouldn't take long for your new light strip to appear. Rename the light and add it to the room of your choice. Once all was said and done, the light strip still wasn't completely alight. I unplugged and replugged the power cable, breathing a sigh of relief when the whole thing lit up. Hit like if you're finding the video useful or enjoyable thus far. In the living room TV room, I removed the play light bars and moved them to the home office room since they'll now be featuring in my laptop setup upstairs. Because the ambience light strip was going to be integrated into my HueSync setup, I removed all of the play light bars from the living room entertainment area and added the ambience light strip. When I tried to position the light strip, I found that I was unable to orient it horizontally in the app. After spending some time researching and not finding anything, I checked the software update section in the settings menu and lo and behold, there was an update available for the ambience light strip. Stepping back into the entertainment area, you can see that the orientation options are now available. Because the light strip will cover the bottom edge of the TV, I selected the lying flat option, parallel to the location of the TV, with the cable on the right. I then selected the rough height of the light strip and hit save. Running a quick demo left me satisfied with the selected height. I can always change this if I feel the need to. As I showed earlier in the video, you do have the option of cutting the light strip wherever you encounter this triangle. I ended up cutting the light strip down to roughly equal the horizontal width of the play gradient light strip, which was about 150cm. The triangles on the light strip appear every 25cm, so I first cut the light strip down to 175cm, making sure to start cutting from the side with the plastic cap on the end. You can see that I cut in the middle of the triangle when I should have cut from the start. I reconnected the light strip just to make sure I didn't break anything, which I thankfully didn't. For the next 25cm section I found using a scissor was more effective. I lined up the scissor just before the triangle on either side and proceeded to cut. This time the cut was a lot cleaner and you can clearly see the exposed pins. The instructions should be a little more clear in this regard. Now that the prerequisites were done, I wiped down the surface to ensure the light strip would adhere well to the back of the TV. I then disconnected the light strip and power cables from the control box to make the installation easier. I used some masking tape to mark out where I wanted the control box to go, removed the 3M tape and installed it. As the control box is now on the left side, I updated the last option in the orientation menu to be plugged on the left side. One tip I can provide if you're installing the light strip on your own is to prop up the unstuck side as otherwise it'll pull off the section that's already stuck. Finally, I tidied up the power cable and I was done. And this is what the complete setup looks like. The play gradient light strip appears brighter and that's due to it being angled at 45 degrees, allowing more light to bounce off the background. The ambience gradient light strip has a higher lumen output of 1800 compared to the 1100 max lumen output of the play gradient light strip. The reason why it doesn't appear as bright is because the light is parallel to the wall and so it doesn't reach as far down. It would have been good to see a couple of 45 degree angle mounts for an alternative solution. My original plan was to use a play gradient light tube but sadly it's out of stock everywhere in the UK. I'm happy that I no longer see the dark spots and for me the experience is now even more immersive. Even though the light doesn't saturate as far down we have a more uniform look. The light from the ambience light strip is fuller in real life and it was difficult to capture it without blowing out the content on the TV. Now if we take a look at the light output from the play bars, there are clear hotspots and they can be distracting, especially if you're seeing them for the first time. The light does extend further down the wall and that's mainly because the play bars are facing downward and not opposite the back wall like the ambience light strip. If we take a closer look at the light output of the light strip, there are no obvious breaks and so it's way less distracting. One downside of the light strip is the efficacy of the adhesive at the back, especially on a curved surface. It tends to pop up after a while and at this point I've just left it as it is. Now for a question most of you will probably have. How much does each option cost? Without factoring in the other hardware you need, the 2 meter ambience light strip will set you back £129.99 or $180. When I purchased the light bars, I spent £164 or $225 for three, a difference of £34 or $45 respectively. If the ambience light strip was available at the time I purchased the three player light bars, the decision would have been a no-brainer. For the complete using setup, it cost me an eye-watering £600 or over $800. It wasn't a single purchase, so that was a bit of a relief. 
The only other direct competitor to the U-Sync box is the Lightme Neo Sync box. If there is enough interest, I'll consider doing a comparison video between the two. The Neo Sync box is a third of the price and you get everything in one package. If you want to see more content like this, you can watch my PS5 and U-Sync one year later video where I show some more cool demos and Alexa integrations. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the content, a like and sub would be fantastic. See you in the next one.